camera one, tighten up your shot. Camera two, pan out a little. Thank you. Oh, VTR two checks out fine, Rich. You know, Rich, I don't want to go mushy on you or anything, but, well, in the past, I've had some very egotistical partners. Right, right. Yeah. And, well, it's just made me appreciate your pro attitude. I mean, since we started the downtown Altoona players until right now, you haven't changed one little bit. Thanks, Johnny. It's time for the Downtown Altoona Players. Starring Johnny Stevens and Jack Bachner. With Alan Roberts, David Cooper, Maureen Cooper. And me, I'm John Darrow. Tonight's musical guests, Conscious Pilot. Ben Grimsby. Yes, I should say I remember him. He was a student of mine for three years. Very strange. Something evil about him. Twisted in the mind. <laughs> During recess, he would sneak up behind the other students, leap on their backs, and try to rip their heads off. <laughs> it it an easy raisin a child like a little pattern. But even a spool, the big pattern was afraid of him. Oh, remember when he was born. The doctor slapped him and pattern crippled him with a knee ball bed Ben. <laughs> even at birth he was a bit demented. But oh so happy. Let me put it this way, mate. Pat and Van Grimsley wasn't exactly what you'd call your average business partner. Uh, he was an highly persuasive type. Uh, convinced me that the only way to do business was his way. Which meant I'd do all the work, and he'd come round every Tuesday about six o'clock to pick up the week's profits, which he uh, promptly deposited in his own personal account. Uh, in return for this, he gave me a solemn word as a gentleman not to disembowel me. I'm Mike Chalice. I'm Dan Rathman. And I'm sorely chafing. And this is 60 Midgets. Tonight on 60 Midgets, we examine the trouble life and times of one Patton Van Grimsby. A public enemy since he was of prenatal age, Van Grimsby moved from one racket to another. Until finally, in 1974, plagued by his faltering real estate business and his estranged husband, Patton Van Grimsby concocted a scheme for the most daring crime ever. Sixty midgets wasted no time in taking the cameras directly to Van Grimsby's former partner in that crime, Slimy Hector. I, uh, I was Patton Van Grimsby's partner in that attempted crime. Well, actually, it wasn't an attempted crime, uh, we did succeed in making it a crime. It was the uh, getting away with the money part gave us a bit of a hard time. Uh, tell us, Hector, if given the chance, would oh, you ever... Please, uh, me friends call me Slime. <laughs> okay, uh, Slime. What exactly was Van Grimsby's scheme? Uh, well, Patton wants to knock over Fort Knox. Knock over Fort Knox? Did you have troops? Uh, yes and no. Let's see, there was me, uh, there was Patton, uh, Uncle Bemis, uh, we was dependent heavily on the element of surprise. Did you at least have weaponry? Oh yeah, we did have that. Patton had acquired himself an old Chinese junk, which she had modified uh, through painstaking effort, I might add, into being the most formidable weapon. The uh, big P we called, uh, here's a photo. Now didn't using a sea weapon on land somewhat hinder your chances of success? Uh, well, the uh, first few miles was a bit rough. A bit rough. Uh, only uphill. 
Ah, so, a Chinese Navy more like elastic sketch. Present a Chinese ship building a very bad like very bad. Make us a rosy face. Uh, you watch a Nazi sketch. Moochi bata. Oh, I say now, say now. I can't tell you what you're going to do. What do you do? What do you do? First, tie what? the Chinaman firmly to the table. Now make sure those knots are tight. We wouldn't want him to slip away. Oh, no, strong enough. Now, for best results, the bow of the ship should be built on or about the head. A head? Oh, you ruin it. I hope you're using number two flathead nail. Flathead nail? Fine. Here we go. Hi, I'm Maureen Cooper, and well, I thought it was important to take this time just to show you that I can appear on camera without yelling or, or screaming or, or getting beat up. You see, Johnny tends to write me in that same type of role. You might even say I've been typecast. Do you know in New York recently I lost three roles? because the casting directors had seen the downtown Altoona players, and they said there was no yelling or screaming in their show. Oh, but I'm not bitter. Really, I'm not. Who cares if, if any one of these roles could have turned my career around, made me a star? Oh, but I'm not bitter. After all, talking to you like this is the first step to show you that I can do other things besides yell. Hey, Johnny even let me write the next sketch. <laughs> Again, huh, Mo? I thought you didn't want to be typecast. Oh. Ah, never mind. How did you lose my car? Well, with you writing some of the show this week, I had some extra time on my hands. So? So I had myself transferred to the special effects department. Of all the sneaky lowdown. Oh, why you? Hold it. Now that's what I call using the medium. And now let's fade to black. I'm sorry. Make that blue. And now presenting Conscious Pilot. How do the walls again? What can I do? Keeping the bargain, what I hold on my end. 
Well, I told you guys my plan three times already. I want some feedback. Well, Lefty, what do you think? Eh, hey, I don't know, boss. Now, what do you mean you don't know, boss? Either you think we can pull it off or you don't. Oh, uh, remember, that is you, me, uh, righty, and fingers. So? So your plan sounded more like a four-man operation. Righty. Hey, yo. Give me your thoughts. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm terribly sorry. We didn't want to overtax your brain. You think it over and we'll all come back when the lady of the house is in. All right, fingers. You need opinion. You see any holes in my strategy? The game plan reads like a Swiss cheese, boss. Thanks for the constructive criticism. Is that all? Nah. The whole thing smells like Limburger. Would you knock off the cheese analogies? No! Do one more! Do provolone, fingers! I love provolone! No one cares, Riley. Go away! Shut up, you guys! So what's your beef? For one thing, the plan's got too many weak links. Like? Like I shouldn't ought to be the one to crack open the safe. Ooh, a chronic complainer, eh? Nitpicking, eh? Look, even if I could crack open that safe, this job's gonna cost plenty of dough to pull off. The getaway car needs a new fuel pump. We're low on bullets. It is the knockout gas and Lefty's radish costume. The way I figure it, this job's going to cost a couple of hundred bucks just to pull off. You got that kind of dough? Ha! <laughs> do I got that kind of dough? He wants to know, do I got that kind of dough? <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. What kind of question is that, do I? Well, I got plenty of scratch put aside for this operation. I say we vote on it. Fine. All those in favor of my plan, raise your right hand. <laughs> it's unanimous. Hey, you want to go away a while? What do you want to do, eh? Uh... That was a rat think vote, and I ain't going along with it. You cheated me for the last time, boss. <laughs> hey, 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 that boss. Hey, we got company. Okay. Okay, smart guy, hold it. Hold it right there. I'm taking over, and I mean business. Get lost, Eddie. This is our turf. No, nah, not anymore, it isn't. Not anymore. You guys have been bought out. By who? By who? By the biggest bosses in the racket. That's by who? New York, Chicago, we're not even Long Island. Well, we ain't selling. Oh, yeah? Hey, somebody get that. Oh? Uh, righty, righty. Uh, lefty, he's stuck. Take that thing away from him. Uh, give me that thing. Ah, uh, well, who is this? Easy, easy. easy. You all right? Give me the phone. Say, who is this? Hey, you guys trying to pull fast one on me? Eddie, we're being taken over, all right. But not by your people. Makes sense, String B. Now, who was that? It was... It was... Patton Van Grimsby. He... Patton Van Grimsby again? You already used that joke in the midget sketch. What kind of comedy script are you writing here, Johnny? Take it easy, will you, Rich? I, I was whacked out of my gourd when I wrote this show. I didn't even know I used the joke twice. I guess I thought it'd be funny to sneak it in again. Well, sneak it right out of you. Uh -huh. Do me a favor. Hmm? No more writing tricks. No more running gags to fill airtime. I want fresh comedy. When you're writing, think Woody Allen. Woody Allen is a genius. I'm just a run-of-the-mill comedy writer. And you're running this show through the mill. There. You didn't get a laugh with that gag, either. Well, the crew liked it in rehearsal. The crew's all on Valium. Oh. Besides that, the Agnello boys are still working on last week's jokes. 
Say, just what is it you don't like about my comedy? You want the truth. For a change, yes. It's juvenile. Is not. Is too. Is not. Is too. Is not. I don't want to discuss it anymore. Um, telegram, man. What's that, your correspondence course in comedy writing? Funny. You know very well that comes in Monday's mail. Hey, this is fan mail. No kidding. Go ahead, read it, read okay. it. Okay. Out loud. Oh, yeah. Uh, gentlemen, I've been watching the downtown Altoona players every week. All right. Sounds great. Keep going. Okay. Uh, mainly because I can't figure out how you stay on the air. <clears throat> Uh, your brash, violent form of comedy leaves everyone I know cold. It beats me how anyone even remotely connected with your production can sleep at night when you've prostituted your craft by doing a totally worthless piece of trash. How's it signed? Uncle Floyd! Ah! Once more, Conscious Pilot! Thank you. 
are they doing? Don't look at me, Rich. I was tanked when I wrote this show, but I know I didn't write in three Pat and Van Grimsby jokes. It's sabotage. Shut up! Listino, cue up the next sketch. Do I have to? Follow orders! <laughs> To the Uncle Freud show. <laughs> hey, Uncle Freud! You ought to try a new line of work! Oh, like what? Like television comedy! <laughs> <laughs> That's it, boys. Laugh it up. That's what I'm not paying you for. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd be psychoanalyzing the crew a bit later in the show. Uncle Freud! You should have come on a bit later in the show! A comedy bit later! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I'll ignore that because right now we have a guest. Hello there, Moogie. Hi there, Uncle Floyd. I didn't go to school today. What? No school? Why not? Because it's Sunday! <laughs> well, that show was the funny. You maybe gotten any more of those chems? Only one. What do you get when you cross a crocodile with a politician? I don't know. What? A nuclear-powered bumblebee shot. <laughs> <laughs> Moogie, that makes no sense at all. I know. Isn't it great you can suck a sponsor into signing a contract for 39 commercials and then get away with rotten jokes? <laughs> <laughs> Boys and girls, let's say all say goodbye to Moogie. Now, right now we have what is one of the best comedians I know. Of course, I don't know too many comedians. Aspect, aspect, aspect. It wasn't me. I didn't pad the script with any more Van Grimsby jokes. Stevens, I've been waiting for this for weeks. Ah. You're fired. I love it. Say, uh, Johnny. Huh? I heard what Rich said out there, and, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but out of all of it, there's, there's one thing I'd like to say. Oh? Tune in next week for Bachner and his friend. Get off the set. <laughs> What a rotten day. I lose my job. Nobody believes me. Who would want to pad the show with that? Pat and Van Grimsby jokes. Who has a motive? Who is responsible for this? That'll teach Stevens to keep Louie out of a whole show. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh. 
You know what Tano Tuna play is? Um stick is. Um stick is. Um stick a lady. Um stick a mister. Um stick a mister. Stick it. Stick it. Hey, say, boy. I'll take one of those. Well, you can't have this one. It's oh. my um sample. Oh, how much is it and where do I get? Mine. Well, for your free bumper sticker and promotional package, just send a self-addressed stamped envelope to Tunis, Box 2306, South Hackensack, New Jersey, 07606.